Well, hi, and welcome to my shop. And thanks so much for joining me here. We're going to be taking a good look at this ham station oscilloscope, which I actually uh, use from time to time, and I <clears throat> hope to use it uh, all the time. Um, so we're going to take a look at it here, uh, go through some of the circuits in it, and see if we can't make sure it's working as good as possible. Uh, this is a Heath kit, not built by me. It's an SB614. It's the transistorized version of the 610, an earlier version of this uh, scope. So like I say, it, it works. Uh, is it working as well as it could? I'm not sure. Most of the time, when I'm all the time, when I'm doing ham, uh, ham work, uh, I'm transmitting QRP, low power, 5, 10 watts, 15 kind of at the most. And uh, my radio is capable of 100 watts, but I keep it down around 10. And I use the various digital modes and can make it around the world on just 10 watts, which is really, really something to ponder when you think about it. So uh, this guy with 10 watts doesn't put much on the screen here. And I'm thinking perhaps the vertical is uh, uh, weak. Uh, vertical deflection amplifier or something like that is weak and maybe I can find some kind of solution to it. Also, this guy has a lot of functions in it that I don't make any use of and uh, they're not apparent on the front panel here. There's a mode switch here. It selects different modes and uh, some of these are kind of interesting and I, I don't know enough about them so maybe I'll discover that along the way. So I have found, I have got a manual here and I found some uh, numbers and statistics. I think I maybe jump right into a test without taking anything apart to try to test the sensitivity of the of the front screen here. So I'm going to just reread the manual a bit and see if we can't do that right off the bat. So deep in the middle of the Heathkit manual is this page, specifications, and there's something here that doesn't quite add up for me. Uh, is the frequency coverage is 80 meter band through 6 meters. So that's all the way from 3.5 megahertz up to 54 megahertz. But then just down here a little further under vertical amplifier, we see frequency response 10 hertz to 50 kilohertz. I, I, I don't understand how this quite fits with this. And down here, horizontal amplifier, 10 hertz to 3 megahertz. So how do you get 54 megahertz as part of the frequency coverage when the amplifiers are limited to 3 megahertz and 50 kilohertz? So this is clearly something I don't quite understand. But I'm interested in knowing if the vertical amplifier is doing its job. And it gives a very important piece of information right here. 60 millivolts gives a quarter inch vertical deflection. It's a very small screen on this device. So I can set up a frequency. It can be within this range. 60 millivolts. I can set it up for 60 millivolts. We can see if it's giving a quarter inch vertical deflection. So that's the very first thing I want to do with this uh, before doing much else. Okay, if we take a minute and look at the different uh, inputs and outputs on the back here. Uh, mostly inputs. The first one is the antenna here. So you would take your ham radio and connect the ham radio to one of these terminals and the antenna to the other. Or you basically insert this in your antenna circuit using these two connectors. According to the manual, the insertion loss is nothing. There's a million ohms input impedance here uh, going into the uh, scope itself. So it doesn't, doesn't draw any power uh, especially when you're transmitting with say 50 or 100 watts. It's just nothing. This is nothing. It's got some other interesting uh, inputs. It's got a vertical input and a horizontal input and this is for some special testing techniques that can be used. And it also has exciter inputs. Don't know what these are about at all. You notice the astigmatism controls or adjustments on the back here. And then there's an attenuator. If you push that switch down, 
uh, this uh, device becomes one tenth as sensitive as it was. You keep it up at the top. So I think if we supply the signal it's talking about to this vertical input, we should see we should see a deflection on the screen here, and we should be able to measure it and uh, find out right off the bat if this is uh, weak, as I suspect, or not. So I've been going through more than one oscilloscope here. Uh, you, if you watch them, you will have seen a series of videos on this scope, getting this one in shape. And I was concerned that this scope wouldn't trigger my better scope. Uh, this is a, only a 10 megahertz scope here. This is a 100 megahertz scope. So that'd be very useful, but it would not trigger. And I spent about an hour going through it. And when I discovered that, in fact, I could make it trigger using the B trigger. There's actually two trigger systems in the scope. The B trigger is a delayed trigger useful for certain applications and, uh, and tests. But nevertheless, it can be used as a trigger. All it really amounted to was just instead of selecting the A trigger, which looks like that, just you can't even see it on the screen, select the B trigger and I can, I can stop uh, signals there. So there we are. Now, what have what we got going here? So I've got, so this signal you're seeing is coming out of here. This is also being fed down to the vertical input on this guy. So I can use this scope to measure the output level of this and then apply the very same signal to here and see what it looks like on the front. Now, what what did it say? I can't remember. I, I, have, to, okay, I have to remind myself what the value is we're trying to set up on that scope here. So we look at the specification page again. Vertical amplifier, it just says 60 millivolts. It doesn't say what kind of millivolts. Is this RMS or peak or peak to peak? We look at the horizontal amplifier. Same line says 60 millivolts again. This time it says RMS. This is RMS. So I think it's a pretty safe guess that what they mean here is 60 millivolts RMS will generate a quarter inch vertical deflection. So 60 millivolts converted to peak to peak is roughly 0.15 volts, 150 millivolts roughly. So that, that's what we'll set the output up for, 150 millivolts. So here's the uh, signal on my scope. I'm set to 50 millivolts per division. It's three divisions tall. That's 150 millivolts. So that should be the correct the maximum, basically, the maximum voltage, or the voltage that should give a quarter, that's really what I want to say, a quarter inch display. And now I have the input also fed to the, oops, to the uh, vertical input here, which I believe is what they're asking to do, because they don't specify it exactly. They don't say it's on the antenna connections or on that special input. I think we're just about ready to go here. I'm going to plug it into a regular outlet. I'll turn it on. Whoops. <laughs> turn it on with this knob. There it comes. And we'll adjust the focus. Vertical gain is the center control. That's maximum. Vertical position. That's all working nicely. Horizontal gain in the center. Horizontal position. So, and this is the internal sweep that's causing this uh, horizontal display. So I don't think that's a quarter inch. I think that's quite quite down from a quarter inch. It looks more like 
a little more than an eighth of an inch. I dare try to measure this. Just see how far apart the grat graticules are on this. And I can't really tell. I can't tell from here. Well, I think that's unsatisfactory. I don't think that's a quarter inch. That's a little low. A couple other mode controls here. See some words changing. Cross, trap, and single sideband is what it says. Now I normally am broadcasting in single sideband, but it's a digital mode. But it appears to have triggered on this. I don't think there is a trigger circuit in here. Okay, so to get a quarter... Now, now, what if I'd interpreted that voltage wrong? The way I interpreted it results in the largest test voltage uh, I'm supplying here. So any other interpretation of that voltage, uh, this is going to get smaller and smaller. There's a times 10 switch on the back. Let's flip it. Oh. A dirty switch on the back here. That's times times ten or one tenth. That's really what it means. It's just a straight line. Doesn't look too good. There's the other setting. So I would say it's weak. Now, how does this compare to an actual signal from a ham radio? So what I've done is I've simply moved the output of the signal generator onto the antenna coupling on the back of the set here. Same voltage level being being applied. You can still see it on the scope. And of course there's no deflection showing at all. So for sure the connections on the back of the scope are uh, directly into the vertical amplifier. And uh, when doing it this way there's obviously some kind of path to allow for the much 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 higher voltages that are going to come from a transmitter. So no surprise we don't see a thing on here. Now I'm going to bring a transmitter in here. Okay, after fighting my way through all kinds of distractions this morning, I'm back in here. And uh, here's what I've set up. This isn't the most satisfactory thing, but it's the best I can do. Yes, it's a CB radio sitting here. The antenna output is connected to one of the antenna inputs on here. The other input is uh, split and has a I, I guess the other input would be an output. You, uh, uh, so I have a 50 ohm uh, load. So the transmitter is seeing 50 ohms, which is what it likes. And up on top here, I have one of these meters. Goodness knows how accurate these things are, but it'll do something anyway. Give us a chance to apply a couple of watts to the back of this machine and see how big a display we get out of a couple of watts. When I'm doing hand radio work, I'm normally using 5 and 10, maybe 15 watts at the most. And uh, so this is similar. At the same time, I also have the output connected to the oscilloscope up here. So we can get some idea of what the voltage is that's on the antenna. So the scope is connected uh, to the, basically to the output of the, uh, uh, well, it's connected across the 50 ohm resistor, I could put it that way. Okay, so I shouldn't hurt my radio. Don't know really how much power this, I think these are supposed to put out 5 watts when all things are great. Again, goodness knows if this meter is, is correct or not. Or even has two calibration settings on it. I don't think they do anything for RF power. So here we go. We're going to look up here first. Okay, so on the watt scale, that was 2 watts of power there. And you can see, you can see this popping up. And I just, okay, phone's in my pocket. Shame on me. I apologize just in case some interference showed up on the video here. So I'm clicking and popping in that. So now we're going to look here. Um, the vertical gain. What's happening there? I can turn this around and around. The knob is slipping. There's a lousy knobs on here. Okay. Maybe I've got, no, no. There we are. That's maximum. Here we go. Watching this. There. Now, when I'm using the ham radio, 
it's about two to three times this size which is uh, which kind of all makes sense I would really like it to be you know pretty much filling the screen not like that I have to fill the screen let's try this yep and there's nothing else here I can do to increase that now let's look at the scope here and figure out what voltage we're actually putting out so it's on the 10 volts per division one, two, three, four, five, six. About, about, about five divisions. About five. So that's around 50 volts coming out. Well, that's pretty impressive. The power supply is just a little guy here. It's not the. Uh, hmm. Of course, these things are made to have a 12 volt input from a car battery or 13, 13 volts, uh, something like that. And what am I supplying it with? Let's see. Yeah. Not that this is important, but let's take a look. According to this, 13.8, so this is the same as a car battery, and up to 0.9 amps. It's probably a little low, so it's, let's see if we can see the evidence that this isn't really putting out everything. And what am I doing with CB? I got, I got a bunch of CB radios. Nobody uses CB up here. <laughs> Nobody. So, okay, so I'm going to watch for dimming of this. So I see no evidence of dimming of the, uh, of the light here I'm pointing at. So I think the power supply is doing the job. I'm going to talk into here because this is an AM transmitter and we're going to double up the power. We can watch this too. I'm on channel 9. Oh, I shouldn't be on 9. We'll go to 14. That's the walkie-talkie channel. Hello, testing. Hello, testing. Testing here. Testing here. Testing, testing everywhere. Surely that didn't go anywhere because it, I'm just feeding a little resistor at the back here. In fact, if I did it a little too long, I might might end up uh, overheating the little resistor. Actually, it's a, like a two watt resistor or something like that. Well, so this kind of proves the case. Uh, either this guy is working fine and its sensitivity is just too low for a low work. In the manual, it says it's good for 10 watts to 8,000 watts. 1,000 watts, that's when you would engage the, uh, the switch back here to make it less sensitive, I'm pretty sure. At 1,000 watts, you can imagine what kind of voltage must be coming out. Would we just multiply it? If 2 volts gives you 50, or 2 watts gives you 50, 200, no, 2 watts gives you 50, 20, if it's, if it's all just linear, 20 would give you 500. Oh my gosh. These are huge voltages. I've never actually re really considered it. I mean, I know a resonant antenna, because of the effect of reactants, can end up with very, very high voltages on it. You can get shocks off it. and get burns, in fact. You get RF burns if there's enough power behind it. Oh my gosh. It's just another deal with transmission lines and resonant things and antennas. Okay. I'm going to stop just at this point because it's uh, it's become lunchtime, and I'm going to go eat my lunch and think about think about think about all of this. It's it's possible there's an adjustment in here that has been set to calibrate the panel to some degree, and that I can sort of overdrive the unit if you like by making it more sensitive. Maybe there's a pad, a resistor. A uh, couple look something something in there that I can do to make this more sensitive. Okay, that's it for now. No one called me back on channel 14, so I'm going to go eat lunch. So I've been studying through the manual to try to find some place where I can affect the deflection, the amount of deflection, vertical uh, deflection, and uh, I haven't quite figured it's out yet. But just take a look at this right from those antenna terminals. The antenna signal 
is attenuated by the RF attenuator switch. This is a big mystery where this is. Then goes on through the circuit and look straight to the deflection plates inside the uh, CRT of the the of the uh, scope. Um, so there's a 110 switch that's down here and what I've discovered is this vertical input that's on the back goes through this attenuation switch and it goes through basically an amplifier and eventually takes over as the vertical deflection. This is a different input from these. This at times 10 switch only affects this input and that's not clear in the manual. And it's not clear to me it didn't do something uh, on the uh, when I when I tried that switch and when I was transmitting with the uh, little CB. Something's not adding up here at all. They have all this circuitry just to enable the occasional use of this vertical input. Meanwhile, the signal that's coming from the antenna is pretty much flashed through to the CRT without much happening. I don't know. It doesn't. This isn't making sense. The other thing is, we can look at this. What what this is on the schematic. Let me just see if I can get to it quickly here. Okay, I must have roared right right past it. Here here. So here's this switch number one RF attenuator. You can see it's right on the antenna input, and it's running along the line that goes straight, almost, not quite straight, but through this circuitry, so it appears. Well, maybe not. Two point P. Two point P. Where's point P? P. Okay, this isn't working quite the way I thought. I misinterpreted what was happening here. I thought this went straight through. Okay, so point P and what's on the other side of the CRT? And you know what? This is the horizontal. I want the vertical to R. R elemental peak R. Okay, coming out of the at this point well since I can't seem to sort things out by looking at the uh, schematic I think it's a good time now to take, take a look inside and uh, look for that attenuator and boy Okay, now, just, I'm asking myself, is this the first time I've ever looked in here? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> it might be. What's going on here? What is all that? Some of it has dropped out the bottom. Uh, fact is I was in here last night sawing <laughs> sawing something but there's no way there's no way this got in here from what I was sawing last night oh my gosh well it's probably harmless it just looks like sawdust it's probably be quite harmless and no I don't think I've ever looked inside here so where we really want to look though is in the back where the signal comes in, and we want to try to find this attenuator. That's the uh, dummy load there. 
Okay, let's look in here. Is it is it on this board? Back here. There it is. That's the attenuator there. Oh my gosh. Well, it's hooked right up to the vertical position. Vertical gain. This is actually vertical gain. Which these potentiometers are. This is what it feels like. I'm just moving potentiometers. What's going on way back here? I'm going to take a wild guess that this is this is adjusting. This is a, some kind of compensation. It says attenuator. Um, I can see something moving in there. I don't know what to make of that. I've never seen anything quite like that before, and uh, there's no click to it whatsoever. Well, there's a click at the end. Huh. Who would have thought? I certainly have never looked in here before. Am I crazy or is, is this half off? Looks like it's half off there. Don't, don't get too close. Could still be some pretty high voltages tucked away in there. Right, maybe sometime in the past I I did something <laughs> and put sawdust in here. How could that possibly be? Especially on the sawdust right, right here. It's not everywhere. That's I'm sure that's sawdust, isn't it? No, it's not sawdust. Is that the remains of an exploded part? Oh, maybe that's what that is. Could be the remains of something that exploded. Let me get a close-up camera going here. I don't see anything exploded like that, but let's let's take a close look at it. Well, I think the question would be, who who blew up here? Um, surely it's something very close to the debris field. Holy smokes! How can this? How can this even be like this? Just gonna fix the uh, uh, fix the focus here just a second. I'm kind of beside myself looking at this. Let's get as close as we can in here. over each individual part I mean where would that stuff come from out of something fairly large so there's an electrolytic capacitor right there top is flat there's one there with a flat top also but the debris is not near them it's nothing that you know this could have happened well who knows I've never looked in here I've had this for 15 years. But uh, it didn't, I don't think it came through the top. There'd be evidence of that, like it got dropped in from something else. What if I had sitting, yeah, no, if I uh, had something sitting on top of this, just, some, some of these parts you can't really see well. Well, look at this debris on top of things. It, it does look like a sprinkling has come down. The size of those chunks are too big to get through the grill. Okay, here's some on my bench right here. It's fallen out of the bottom. Falling out the bottom. How did it get around to the bottom? 
a lot of it here. Well, I, I look at it. But it does look. It looks like an exploded capacitor. It's completely annihilated. A big loud bang. Now you know. I I left this operating for quite a while today. I was out of my shop, distracted over and over. Something is completely gone. Like it's disappeared. <laughs> There's no wreckage left. Well, I gotta vacuum all this stuff away here. I'm looking for a couple of a couple of wires uh, sticking up. Well, it has to be right in the middle. If that's the case, it'd be right here. Well, maybe. Well, maybe we would see some wires sticking up. Oh, wait a minute. No. We're just in a strange. I don't get it. And of course the, the, the set appears to operate. Except the vertical so it seems well I, I can't say it's weak. It could be exactly what it's supposed to be. It's weak for my purposes. Well, okay, so if we take a Bit of an out focused look here from here. Where would you say the center of the debris is? Well, it'll be very much right here. And what has white crystalline material, a large amount of it? Like, there's a lot of this stuff in here. This is really odd. Uh, you know, I'm gonna, I have to vacuum all this away and then we'll see about the missing component the wires sticking out or maybe something will be obviously damaged once I, once I have it out how else could this happen? how else could this happen? so you can see the size of the holes in the grill, they're that big so yeah, quite a bit of debris could go through yeah, you know what, this could have come from something up above some long time ago long before I even owned this this could have happened some machine up above popped its capacitor and wow look at that junk right there oh there's something I'm blowing off blowing off the side <laughs> was there an explosion up in this area well and you could see debris up here I have seen a blown capacitor nothing like this bits and pieces of paper though for sure and uh, but the capacitor I mean, it's there with its guts spewed out um, whatever capacitor did this is, is gutless What did the blown capacitor say to the good capacitor? I, I'd blow again if I had the guts. Well, yeah, I can't, I'm not getting anywhere, so I'm going to vacuum that out and uh, see what we see. Well, there it is. Uh, there's no sign of anything being wrong or bad there. There's no sign of any component missing. I mean, the wires would still be there. There would, there would be ob It would be obvious. Well, I guess this just goes on my list of really weird things that can't be explained. That's uh, most of life kind of falls into that category. Strange. Well, I, you would think too, if a big part was blown out of here, this thing wouldn't work appears to work just not deliver quite what I want now let's go back to the uh, this this guy here hmm. 
So I would think if this is a switch, you would feel the switch contact. Uh, this is going to be part of uh, part of uh, what ails me. I don't think so. It doesn't look very clean, though, does it? It's kind of, it's kind of deep down in here. Get a little more light on it. This is this is connected. I'll turn the right control here. Pretty directly to the antenna input. Well, I can spray some cleaner in there, but I, I this I don't think this is implicated in any way. Or is it? I mean, as I let's see, what's 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 going on here? So. This is uh, uh, most amplification. This is least amplification. Now one of these is open. So when, when, when this control is at the limit, one of the limits, it's open circuit. It would look like there. Now there's no open circuit terminal. They just don't have a terminal there. And you can kind of can you see the actual contact in there? I don't think so. Let me swing around for some better lighting here. See if we can see in the side. see in there. Okay, that's interesting. Now I know what it is. I know how it's connected. And uh, let's take a look back at the uh, uh, schematic here and figure out what's what with it. 